Hey, welcome. I'm Jana with Pearl Together. And in this week's technique video, I want to talk to you about the afterthought heel. Now, a true afterthought heel is exactly that. It comes after you've knitted the sock. So you knit your whole tube sock and then you're putting in the heel wherever it goes, depending on the recipient's foot. So things like the forethought heel implies just that. You've kind of planned that out beforehand. You've put in waste yarn and you've continued knitting, but you knew where the heel was going to be before you finished the whole tube sock. So this is the afterthought, proper afterthought heel, where you're going to determine where to insert the heel after you've knit the entire sock. There are some advantages to the afterthought heel. One is that you can maintain the striping sequence or the patterning of the yarn itself, and you can use a contrasting color potentially. Um, they're easy to replace if you need to do that. Um, there's a couple of things I don't care for about the afterthought heel. If you tend to have high arches, it may be not the heel for you. It, there are some ways to account for that, but it's not as easy to get a good fit, in my opinion, as the heel flap and gusset might be. So things to consider if you're going to try the afterthought heel is the recipient. Do they have a high instep? Do they not? Do you need to do that? Um, Anyway, things to consider. Leave, Drop me a comment down below if you have any questions about that. But the afterthought heel is relatively straightforward to do. If you can knit a toe, you can knit this heel because that's all it is. It's the same as knitting the toe. So I will put some information down below in the description about the 4321 heel. I swiped that from Stephanie Pearl McPhee credit where credit's due. I don't know if she invented that or got it from someone else, but it's a great heel. So it's a great toe to use for a heel and also a toe for a toe's sake. <laughs> you know what I mean? Before we get started, I want to give several patrons a thank you, a public shout out. Thank you for joining the Pearl Together patron family. I really appreciate that. That's how we keep the lights on, help to keep these videos coming to you each and every week. So a big thank you to Jules, Lainey, Laurie, Chris, Lori, Mary, Rebecca, Joan, and Jennifer. Thanks so much for supporting Pearl Together. If you want to become a patron and see what perks I'm offering for a small monthly pledge, head over to patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together. All right, let's get started. All right, we have our sock tube here. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is find where are the sides exactly. So you know, they can shift a little bit like this. You don't want it to get twisted. So what you need to do is find the exact edges. Um, now, most of the time we use 50% of the heel stitches for our sock. So we want to find the exact edges. Um, I've cast on 64, so I need to find the 32 stitches and the edges of those so that, you know, the sock isn't twisted like this and my heels like this and the toe is wonky. We want everything to be lined up right. You get the idea. So what I'm going to do is take some waste yarn and my darning needle, and I'm going to go here on my toe, and I know that when I knitted my toe, I did my decreases. You can see that's a little bit wonky, but and they haven't been blocked yet, but you can see that Here's my decrease and here's my decrease, and this is the center right here. So I'm gonna take this waist yarn and my darning needle and I'm gonna do a running stitch marker exactly on the side, each side of my sock all the way up. So I found my middle and you need to just, let me zoom in here a little bit so you can see. You need to just go in, in between these stitches here where the V is, and you want to go right in the in the middle. So what I'm going to do is put in my darning needle where I know the edge is right there. Okay, and then I'm going to take my waist yarn. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to pull this through, and that's going to be my line. because I need to make sure that I'm going all the way up. I need to make sure that I'm going all the way up here to where my heel is going to be inserted. And we'll talk about that for a moment, but right now I'm just gonna do a good guess where my heel's gonna end up. 
and this helps me follow along on the same track. Whoops, I might see now I might have gotten over one row right there. Let's go back and look. On this darker, yep, I sure did. So I'm going to take out this top part. It's difficult sometimes to see the the straight line in the darker section. So just be patient with yourself and take it slow and do your running stitch marker. There we go. Okay, now I'm on track. I was half a stitch over, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but it could be. So I'm gonna carry on up to where I think the heel is roughly going to be. All right, I've put in my running stitch marker from the edge all the way up, and my heel's gonna be roughly in this neighborhood somewhere. Now, here's a, an interesting thing. Um, there's a couple different ways you can measure for the heel. So the first thing that is probably the best idea is to measure your foot. So I know that my foot is 11 inches long overall, okay? So I can measure from 11 inches from here all the way to here. However, that's not where I want to start the heel. So I know that when we knit an afterthought heel, it's actually exactly the same as knitting a toe. So we're going to take a toe, this same toe pattern, decrease pattern, and we're going to cut right here, pick up our live stitches and knit the same exact thing. So we're gonna insert a toe, if you will, right here, visualize that. We're gonna put a toe right there to make a heel, okay? So because I've already knitted this toe, I know how many rows it takes for this particular rounded toe that I use, which by the way, I stole this toe from Stephanie Pearl McPhee. It's a four, three, two, one toe. And that's where you knit you do your decrease round, then you knit four, then you decrease, then you knit three, then you decrease, then you knit two, you decrease, you knit one, and then you decrease every round until you get to the number that you'd like to Kitchener. So mine is, we're gonna call it an inch and three quarters. So one and three quarters. So I take the overall length, the overall length of my foot, which is 11, subtract one and three quarter, so that would make nine and one quarter is where I would want to put in my heel. So for me, that means that my heel is going to be inserted right in the middle of this lighter blue section. So what I'm gonna wanna do, after I've delineated where the sides are, the next thing I need to do is put my running stitch marker on the other side another one. Or you can also count across 32 stitches if you can see that for yourself. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here's 32 right in between my 32 stitches right here. Okay, so I'm going to put another little piece of yarn right here because I know that that's my other edge. Now this one I did all the way from the toe so I could follow the line up. And then what I did was just count it over my 32 stitches so I know that that's the other side. Okay, so now I know where my edges are and I know that I want to cut a row right in the middle of this particular section. So the next thing I need to do is get a hold of some DPNs that are a smaller gauge than what I used to knit with. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start here right at this first stitch and I'm going to, I'm gonna turn this because I like to look at it the way it was knitted, where, so there's V's, not A's. It's just what I'm used to seeing. So there's my stitch marker on the right hand side, which delineates the edge. Let me zoom you right on in. Okay, so, in this light blue row, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. Now this one only goes part way across, but I wanna be right in the middle of this color section. So for me, this is why it's helpful to do afterthought heels in something that's highly variegated or striped. So it's easy to get your bearings and see what's what. So what I wanna do is take this first stitch right here 
and I'm going to go in underneath it and pick up the right leg. So I'm going to pick up the right leg of that stitch, skip the left leg, pick up the right leg of the next one, and so forth all the way across until I have picked up the right leg of every stitch. Here's another thing that you might want to keep in mind. If you have some little stitch markers, just to help keep yourself on track. I have seven rows here of this light blue, and I want to end up cutting the fourth one. So I know I'm gonna cut that one. So what I'm gonna do right now is just put one of these pear-shaped or light bulb stitch markers right there because that's the one that I'm going to cut later. And I'm gonna move that later, but I just wanna have a visual representation of which row I want to outline or frame. So again, you're gonna to wanna to pick up the right hand leg of the stitches in the row right above and right below the row you intend to cut. Okay, so for me, I need to pick up 32 of these, so I'll go ahead and do that on this double point, and I'll make sure that I have 32. Now I wanna point out also that you don't have to use double points for this. You could certainly use a size smaller circular needle. Um, in fact, that's a little bit easier because then if you have the cable, these stitches on the cable, then it's more flexible and that's actually easier. Um, so if you have some, if you have a smaller circular needle, you may have, you might find that easier than doing a double point because the double points are less, obviously less flexible and more difficult. Um, you'll see, things will get a little bit tense, um, but it's fine. So we're just gonna make sure that we have two rows above and I'm right above the row I intend to snip in a few minutes. So again, I'm just going across picking up the right hand leg of each stitch in this row. Now don't be thrown off now that the uh, color has changed. See that jog right there? So now I only have one blue row above the one I'm picking up because of the color jog. So you can stretch the fabric a little bit to make that a little easier to pick up. Okay, and I haven't counted yet, but I will. All right, I've made sure that I have 32 stitches here that I've picked up. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing and pick up the stitches two rows below. So there's the ones I picked up. There is the target row that I'm going to cut. So this is the row I'm gonna pick up now, okay? So the row I've picked up, the target row that will become cut, and then the row I'm going to pick up again. Again, the right leg of each stitch all the way across. Okay, so being careful not to split any stitches as we go across. This may be something you don't wanna do late at night or if you don't have good lighting or good glasses. Okay, now you can see I missed one there. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna carry on all the way across. I have now picked up 32 stitches across. I need to now make absolutely sure, you're gonna to wanna to check and double check and triple check that what you've done here is you're on the correct row, double check that you're on the correct row at the bottom and that you have only one row of stitches between the rows that you've picked up. That's crucial to note. So I'm gonna double check that. I have two, two stitches, two rows remaining of the light blue all the way across the bottom. I have my row that I've picked up, I have the row that I'm gonna snip, and then I have two stitches above here and only one stitch here where the color changed because of the jog. So you just want to make absolutely sure that you're all good. Then what I'm going to do is take my darning needle and I'm gonna find a stitch right here in the middle, fairly close to the middle, and I'm just gonna, that darning needle's a little too thick, I'm gonna take another DPN and I'm just gonna kind of dig out one leg, just one leg of the stitch right there, okay? 
Then this little light bulb stitch marker that I have, I'm gonna put that on there. So you're gonna to wanna to just stick that on there. Everything is really tense, it's very tight. Um, okay, I'll show you why we're gonna do that. All right, so this is what you should have. You can use cables, a circular needle, so you have cables here that will make, make it more comfortable, certainly more flexible, or waste yarn, or your smaller DPNs. Okay, now, I'm going to snip just this one stitch. Okay, again, I cannot stress enough that you need to double check and triple check everything before you cut. <laughs> okay, so then I like to use my stitch marker here to kind of pull that stitch up and make it snippable. So here I go. I have my tiny little pointy scissors. And I'm just gonna go right in there next to my stitch marker and snip. That's it. Done it. Okay, no turning back now. Now what you're going to do is painstakingly pick out that yarn all the way across. You're going to just loosen that up. I think it helps to put your hand inside there. It also does help if your work is your needles are flexible here. But what I'm going to do is use this other DPN to go in under and I'm going to pick that out. And we know how the stitches go, how it goes up and down like this. So you can use that knowledge to kind of know which side to tug on. It is much easier after you get it started and things start to loosen up. It's really the first two that are the first couple of stitches that are most difficult to undo. But the reason that we don't cut it all the way across, that we, we want this tail, we want this, and it'll become less ratty after you get started. But we, we're gonna need this because we're gonna want to weave this in securely. And if you just go cutting things all the way across, then you won't have a strand to secure. So just be, be patient and take your time. Okay, as you can see, my, the yarn that I was picking out came pretty ratty. And I also have baby kitten help and yeah. So I have some interference, but it's okay. When I weave this in, I'm just gonna really just, you know, manually twist this back together so it's more twisted and twined like it should be, and it'll be fine when I go to weave it in. Um, little Mr. James is not helping. So when I get down to the end here, I, you can tell that I still have this one strand that's going underneath this stitch. So I'm almost finished picking this out and it has been challenging. It is easier if you don't mind putting your stitches on waist yarn because it's just more flexible and easier to, to pick out the stitches. So I've done half of this. You can see that I have this void, this space here. So now I just need to continue picking out the other side and then we're gonna pick up our stitches and begin knitting the heel. Okay, I have almost finished removing the yarn from this side. Again, you can see I just have this one leg still attached. Um, so I'm going to loosen this and take out this last little bit. Okay, and mine got pretty ratty but we will just, I'll just twist it back together and we'll weave it in. For now though, I'm gonna tuck my ends, tuck the tails of the yarn that I removed, tuck that down inside, because we don't need to worry about that right now. We're just gonna tuck it, all the scrappiness down inside. Tuck that down inside and then we're going to pick up our stitches on the needles that we knitted the sock with. And you can also pull out, at this point, you can pull out the markers on the sides as well. All right, so I'm just gonna go along here, I'm gonna go along and s just tip to tip, slide these stitches back on my working needle, being careful not to twist them. I'm slipping them off as if to purl or just going across tip to tip. So I do it as if to purl um, because that doesn't twist anything that way and just double count, make sure you have the number of stitches that you should and then we're gonna begin knitting the heel. 
And I'll talk briefly about uh, ways you can add some increases if you need to, if you have a higher instep or a higher arch. Um, there's a couple different things you can do. One is if, okay, if you're knitting a true afterthought heel, you will have this sock tube and you will not have pre-planned where, I'm not sure why this stitch is twisted, you will not have pre-planned where the heel will go. And so if you're doing a forethought heel, you can pre-plan where the heel goes. And what I mean by that, let me back out here a little bit. What I mean by that is if you know where you're going to put the heel and you've inserted waist yarn here and you've pre-planned that, so it's a forethought heel, not an afterthought heel, then you may have done some increasing from the toe up or from the cuff down. You may have done some e increasing in order to add some stitches that you're going to use to create the heel with. You can, um, similarly, you can use more than 50% of your stitches and that will increase the heel depth or your heel diagonal. Um, and I will sh talk about a couple of other things that you can do after I get this other half picked up. And since I'm magic looping, I'm just going to, you know, curl around my needle here with the help of little Mr. James. Sweet baby kitty thinks he's helping. Air quotes, helping. Um, he just wants to chew on my needles. So we're tolerating sweet baby James while we make this afterthought video. Okay, I'm doing magic loop here. You can see that I have my two needle ends. This is where I'm gonna start. This is the other side. I have a little help here, little kitty assistance. <laughs> he's only about four months, so he's very entertained by all this. Okay, there's a couple things you can do if you need to have a bigger heel diagonal. And what I mean by that is, let me show you with this other, other sock. Okay, what I mean by that is a he your heel diagonal, if you need to have more stitches across the instep and you need to have more space here because you have taller arches, um, you might need to increase some stitches. You need to increase the depth of this diagonal measurement. You can do that by using uh, putting in your afterthought heel in more than 50%. Maybe you go 60% of your stitches are the heel and 40% is the instep. Um, you can do some increasing if you know if this is a forethought heel and you can do some increasing here if you're knitting from the toe up you can increase this so that you have more stitches for the heel and that way your your heel is deeper the other thing that you can do is knit two or three rounds when we pick up so that's pretty simple um you can knit two or three or four rounds extra right here the other thing you can do is increase if you know the number of stitches extra that you need and that involves some math which we can go over another time um, but if you know that you need to increase say eight stitches or four stitches or six stitches you can simply knit one round evenly space those increases all the way around here and then knit your heel that way or a combination of all of those things the point here is that it's going to take some trial and error um, for you to determine what works best for you. Oh my gosh, you're a little maniac. Say hello. Say hi, James. So I think what I'm going to do here is a kind of a combination. I'm going to increase my heel number. I have 64 stitches now. I think I would like to have 68, so I'm going to do some increases evenly spaced all the way around. I'm just going to increase four. Then I'm going to knit two or three rounds and then we'll go from there and I'll show you how I'm going to knit my heel, which is really a toe. Just pretend that's right there. All right, I'm ready to add my contrasting color and I'm not going to tie it or do anything. I'm just going to begin knitting with it and I'll show you later on how we're going to weave in our ends and, you know, secure all of this later. So as I mentioned, I am going to choose to increase four stitches. I think I'll just do two on each corner. Um, you can do a lifted increase, a make one. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do my normal lifted right leaning increase right here. 
and carry on to the other side and I'll do the same thing. The other thing you can do here, if you know the number of stitches that you need to increase by, you can do an increase round, knit around, increase round, just to give yourself that space and depth before you begin um, doing your heel decreases. Now, I don't really think it's a good idea to knit an afterthought heel um, for someone that you don't know. There's other heel methods that are much more forgiving. And if you don't know somebody's heel measurements, then it's difficult to get a good fit. Um, I think there's, you know, certainly more forgiving heels to do, like the heel flop and gusset, I think, um, particularly with some ribbing on the instep for somebody, you know, if you're knitting socks for a gift for someone and you're really not sure what their measurements are, then I think that's a better idea. There are advantages to the afterthought heel. Um, it doesn't disrupt your stripe pattern if you are concerned about that. If you want to do contrasting heels, this was originally called a peasant heel because it's easy to replace. So, you know, if your heel wears out, you can cut it out, pick up the stitches, and carry on. Now, the other advantage to this is if it doesn't fit, you can just tear it out and, you know, redo it You're without knitting the entire sock, obviously. So there, there's an advantage there as well. Okay, so now that I've done my increasing, I am going to knit, I think I'm going to knit th two or three rounds plain before we begin the decreases. Okay, for me, I've knitted my increase row here, and now I have 60, or sorry, 34 stitches on each side, or 68 total. And so now I've knitted my, so I did that on my increase row, and then I've knitted two plain rows. So I think I'm gonna knit one more, so I have a total of four rows. Then I'm gonna begin my decreases, which is going to be exactly the same way that I knitted the toe. So I will also uh, write this out in the video description so that you have what I've done, which is the 4-3-2-1 heel. I learned that from Stephanie Pearl McPhee. Um, it's easy to remember. I also like the round, my rounded toe, which I'll put a link for that. Um, I'll put a link in the video description box below for both of those toe rounded toe methods. So I'm doing the four, three, two, one, and it's super easy. Let me finish this round and I'll show you how we're gonna go about that. I like it because it's easy to remember. Okay, if you can knit a toe, you can knit an afterthought or peasant heel. So the first thing I'm going to do is a decrease round. So I'm going to just knit the first stitch and I'm gonna do a slip slip knit because I want my decreases to point inward. So they're pointed toward the center of my work. So knit one, slip slip knit, and then I'm gonna knit across until I get to three stitches before the end of the needle. You want your increases, or sorry, you want your decreases to point or lean in toward the center so that you have the rounded effect. You don't want them to lean out away from the center of a sock because then that would be uh, the kind of the opposite angle of how the toe is going to be shaped. Okay, three before the end, and then I'm just gonna knit two together. Knit two together, knit one. If you're doing double points, you would want to have your um, one fourth of the stitches on each needle. Now you wanna also work to avoid ladders here. Um, you don't want holes or gaps in the sides. So when I do this first stitch, I make sure that the cable is snugged right up against there and I give that a good little, I give this uh, first stitch a good little tug and then I also give the second one a, a good little tug as well. But now I'm doing the slip slip knit because I'm doing my decrease round and here's where I give that a, a good little tug also and then carry on knitting across until we have three stitches before the end. All right, three stitches before the end. There we go. Knit two together, knit one. Okay, that's my decrease round. So now I'm gonna knit four, knit four plain rounds. 
then I'm going to do a decrease round knit three, do a decrease round knit two, and so forth. So what happens then is it ends up looking like this, where I have knit four, decrease knit three, decrease knit two, decrease, and then I decrease every round until I get down to the number of Kitchener stitches that I want. So you can, you know, close that up pretty quickly. Now I like that rounded toe. Um, you can do that a little more gradually. You can also make that kind of trapezoid shape or the wedge toe. Okay, I've completed the heel and I did this rounded toe down to 10 heel stitches that I Kitchenered. Now, if you haven't done the Kitchener graft, um, I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner here, as well as down below in the video description. I have a, a video that takes you through that step by step, but it's just a seamless graft and it makes it smooth. Alternatively, if you really don't care for the Kitchener, you can go ahead and keep decreasing all the way down to like four or six stitches and then just cut your yarn, run it through those and pull it tight like a purse string. Now that does leave a teeny weeny little hole at the end of your heel, the point of the heel, and it also isn't quite as comfortable. But if you really can't deal with the Kitchener, then that is an option. So here we go. Okay, so now you can tell I have a couple little holes right here, but that's because we haven't woven in those ends and cinched all that, you know, adjusted the tension here and cinched all that up yet. All right, so I'm going to turn this inside out and I'll show you how I like to weave in my ends. So this is the ratty one that we picked out and I'm going to, I'm going to give that a good little tug because I want to close up any holes that might be right there. So give that a little tug and this one also, you can do a square knot right here if you want to. Um, it's not elegant or pretty, but it does the job. So I kind of like to do that to secure that hole because that is a stress point when you pull the sock over and that's small enough that you're not going to feel that on the side of your heel. So the next thing I like to do is take a needle that is pointy. I like a pointy needle that has a pretty good size eye there. You can see that. I'm just going to go ahead and thread that with my ragtag ratty bit here. It's kind of a mess from me picking it out, but it'll weave in just fine. Okay, and we'll trim that off too when we're done. Now what I like to do is, let me zoom in here a little more for you. What I like to do is go do a little bit of duplicate stitch. I want to make sure I'm closing up any holes that there could be right, maybe right there. So I want to make sure and go in and out underneath those stitches. I like to use a pointy needle because it's actually okay in this particular instance to split a stitch on purpose. <clears throat> That's just going to cause this wool to grab a little better and it'll felt in. I mean I know it's super wash sock wool, sock yarn, but it will felt in a little bit slightly and the fibers will grab onto each other. So I'm going to close up whatever little hole might be right there by going up and down and back and forth underneath and through some of those pearl bump strands. Let's see. My tail's too long. There we go. Then when I'm done with that, I'm just going to go up and down in through the pearl bumps here being careful not to let this show on the other side. You can do some duplicate stitch if you'd like, but that's going to be just fine. Okay. I'm going to trim that off pretty close. All right. And I'm going to do the same with all of my ends. I'll do this gray one and then we'll turn it uh, right side out and make sure that nothing is showing. So what I'm just going to do here is go through some of these pearl bumps and since we tied our tiny little square knot, it's not going to take much to just weave in these ends. I just kind of split the stitch a little bit. You can see that and go down a diagonal and I'm just splitting the stitch on purpose 
So it's not going to show on the outside, but it's going to secure that tail. Okay, I'll show you what I mean, and then I'll let you go and do all of your ends as well. But let's take a look. All right, you can see that closed up any residual gap there might have been. And yay, it's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm going to carry on and weave in the rest of my ends, and then I'll do sock number two. But there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber already, please consider becoming one. Give me a thumbs up, all that good stuff. All of it helps. All of it helps the YouTube machine. <laughs> it helps these videos get recommended to other people searching for similar content. So thank you for doing that. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your preferred knitted heel type is. I'd like to know, do you prefer the afterthought heel and why, or some other kind of heel? All right. Thank you again for watching. I appreciate your support.